Hey, how about you, everybody? Come on in, pull up a chair. We've got a great show for you today. I am Jeffrey Lee, and this is the Shriveled Pod. Uh, joining me today is our big time badass recruiting analyst, Cole Pinkston. What's up, Cole? Man, I appreciate that intro. Uh, I was wondering what you're going to give me. I'll take that any day. Badass. <laughs> really, man, you've been killing it. You've been killing it. Uh, I would n- not want to be competing against you. Let's put it that way. Thank you, sir. Cole was a badass this weekend as well when uh, Auburn had a home game. Um, I, I can only remember the first half, but uh, that's all you really want to remember, right? It's uh, it's about all worth remembering. Although I'm afraid, man, that was uh, w- real quick, man. That that was Georgia last year was a dominating. Just it was ugly and embarrassing. I don't know that, but this one was – it was the worst loss I think I, I can remember. Yeah. I'm working on the film study right now, and I just decided, you know, there's no point in going through the first half. Let's just see how exactly Mississippi State climbed back in the game. I got to tell you, it's frustrating. It's going to be frustrating if you decide if – you, if you're man enough to go back and look through that stuff, it's going to frustrate you a little bit. But, uh, yeah, I mean – well, the problem is, is the first half, I'm, you know, you're watching the game and, and, and it's four possessions, four touchdowns. The defense is shutting, them, is shutting them out except for the field goal. And you're going, damn, dude, this is the way to respond. Like, you know, any doubts I had about this team, any doubts I had about this coaches being able to win out. Because I'm watching that 28-3 and I'm going, man, these, these cats have a legit potential, have the legit potential to beat Alabama at home. Honestly – there's a couple ways to look at it too with with recruits if you're a recruit the way you can look at this and the way some of them are looking at it is okay first half they executed about as well as possible um with you know they know they know by now the talent level they know the receiver's talent they know all that kind of stuff offensive line and they say okay so this this staff can put a plan together they see that they know the plan cuz the staff talks to them about it all the time that's what they tell us in interviews and then the second half, it falls apart because they don't have enough, right? Yeah. Okay, well, one, you, you got some trust in the staff that they can put a game plan together, at least for, for you know, what they have in the moment and for one half. Two, uh, they got to have more talent. That's where I come in, right, if I'm a, if I'm a recruit. I mean, there, there's a couple ways to look at it that fans are not going to see it that way. They, they don't understand that recruits have a different way of, of taking things like that in. You know, well, you know, surprisingly, the interviews you had after the game, uh, the recruits, and we try to tell this on, on the message boards I have for years, you know, like, believe it or not, wins and losses is not the number one thing these recruits are looking at when they come to these games. They're looking at environment, they're looking at, you know, conversations with coaches, relationships with coaches, uh, uh, the, the fans, the Tiger Walk. Uh, how the team looked, absolutely. And I think that was one of the positives you could take away from that game was the recruits went, well, man, you know, they looked good that first half. Yeah. You know, yeah. fell off there at the end. Didn't turn out – we heard a lot of it didn't, you know, go the way they wanted there in the second half. But um, I think there was – I think there – I don't think the recruits lost any confidence in the staff or in this team or program uh, after Saturday. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you. It definitely didn't sound like that. I mean, there were some positive things said. And, you know, it's an interview, so they're not going to say everything they're thinking. Right. But but they're not going to – I mean, I've had guys say so far, you know, that was a pretty bad game from Auburn. They didn't say that this week. Their, their focus wasn't there for whatever reason. So. Well, we'll we will talk about some guys there. We had a Malik Agbo – the consensus four-star offensive tackle from Washington State Federal Way, Todd Beamer High School, came down for an official visit with his parents. Or I'm sorry, with his mother. His mother came with him. Auburn had offered this guy, I think back in August. They were one of uh, one of the later offers. He <laughs> What happened? <laughs> what happened? Your background's on your face again. <laughs> Damn, dude. Man, I don't think I'm on the right. It's recording. Let me make sure. I don't know how to do this. 
video setting, virtual background. None. Here we go. There you go. You're good. All right. <laughs> but anyways, Agbo comes down with his mom. They come down on Friday. They're, they're finished with the season, so uh, it wasn't like he had to fly in late Friday night or early Saturday morning. Got down here in time. And from all accounts, now I haven't been able to get him on the phone. I talked to him briefly Sunday on his way to the airport. Um, he was tired, understandably so. Those those kids uh, get out with their player host Saturday night and, and try to get some of that college experience of what it would be like to be here uh, in, in Auburn as a student athlete. Uh, but so I haven't talked directly with him in detail, at least. But from everything we've heard behind the scenes, it sounds like it went pretty well. Yeah, I, I got to be around him a little bit on the sideline, too, and um... – I think I think he's got one of those personalities that he's he's just excited all the time. He's he brings a lot of energy. He's he loves what he's you know he, he thought the, he thought the atmosphere was great. Don't get me wrong. I just I don't want to overplay that he's he's a happy guy. Right? He's always excited. Yeah. He gets along with everybody pretty well. So so he you don't he may have been that way at every visit. But but some of the things he said to me and, and some of the things that the guys that were around him said are interesting and, and I think Auburn's got a legitimate shot here. Um, I, I don't know if they'll eventually get him. I think they are probably going to put the full court press on him now that they've been around him. They've seen him. I think he's a good character fit. They, they seem to think so. The Auburn staff does. Uh, the commits love him. That's who he hung out with most of the time. Damari Austin, Jacoby Albert, uh, you know, Caleb Wooden, those guys were, were around him the whole game. It seemed like so. I, th- I think by all accounts, it went as well as, as Auburn could have hoped for. And I think it went pretty well for Malik, too, and, and his mom. <clears throat> yeah, he, he's an awesome dude. And, you know, he, you talk about him becoming a, a higher priority for Auburn. And that's because, you know, a week ago on the early signing period for basketball, baseball, uh, Riley Quick, offensive tackle from Hewitt Trussell, who had been deciding on either playing baseball at Alabama or football at Auburn, went ahead and signed with Alabama. So he is officially off the board, yep. which which means Malik Agbo is up, up there at the top alone on Auburn's offensive tackle board, at least high school guys that we know of. Yes. Um, some other big news from the weekend, not Auburn related. And we're going to come back to the Auburn guys because – well, we had Miles Pollard. Let's, let's, let's finish out the 2022 guys that came to Auburn. Miles Pollard, defensive back from Ravenwood High School in Brentwood, Tennessee. Uh, Michigan commitment. He had actually visited Auburn back in June for an official visit, took an official visit to Maryland, then took official official visit to Michigan, then committed to Michigan, and has remained, I guess, fairly firm uh, since then. But Auburn has continued to recruit him. Derek Mason, Zach Etheridge. Uh, and they ended up getting him to come down for an unofficial visit Saturday. Miles Pollard, he and his father left Friday night after the game in Memphis, I believe, and drove about halfway, spent the night somewhere, got up, come on to Auburn Saturday morning, spent the day in Auburn. So dude went out of his way to make sure he came to an Auburn game. And I was able to get in touch with him today, Tuesday, Sunday afternoon. Uh, And he – he had a great time. He saw – I thought it was important that, you know, he saw what the cornerbacks were doing. He really paid attention to what they were uh, playing and their development. And uh, now he went back home, committed to Michigan, said he really didn't know if anything was going to be able to change that, but certainly he's going to continue to listen to Auburn. And then we saw – who else was there, Cole? 2022. I think that was uh, – that was some of the bigger ones. I mean, the commitments were all there, but – Uncommitted yeah. guys. Robert Woodyard was there. There you go. Although he was not, if you if you're in the stands and you're looking for him on the sideline, you weren't going to find him because he stayed in the complex. I'm pretty sure the whole game. Yeah. Uh, and after the game, and he was one of the last people to leave. So I think he was the last person to leave. Actually, so I, I don't know what what that means exactly. Other than he's obviously very comfortable at Auburn right now. I know him and Miles Pollard hung out together because yeah, they we're together when he snuck over June? for yes. He remember when he snuck over for and it was before Big Cat Weekend, right? And this picture surfaced on Twitter. Robert Woodard was wearing the Auburn jersey next to Miles Pollard, 
and a few other guys. I can't remember who all it was. Maybe Jacoby Albert was there. I don't know why his name comes up. But anyway, uh, he was there. They were there together. I think they hit it off there. So, you know, they came back this week and, and were both at the game and hung out from what I understand and, and saw them together a couple times. And um, like I said, Woodard was, you know, he sort of quietly came back. And as he keeps doing, he'll probably be back from the Iron Bowl. Um, actually, he will be back from the Iron Bowl, I believe. Yes. But – the point is, I think Auburn's – I think they're in great shape. Yeah. With Woodard. I, I think they got a great shot. One of the things that stuck out to me about Robert Woodyard this trip was he was definitely – he still is definitely coming for the Iron Bowl, but he really wanted to get back up here for the Mississippi State game. And he's coming from Mobile, which yep. is not – which is not a quick drive from Auburn. No. But uh, – so much so that Thursday night and into Friday, he was looking for somebody to bring him up. He needed a ride uh, to Auburn. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe his defensive coordinator, uh, Antonio uh, Antonio Coleman, yep. badass defensive end back in the day for Boom, um, brought I think him and he, he and he brought uh, Robert up here for the game, which is Robert's second game and fourth visit, I think, since June. Yeah. I think he came in June. I think that's where Miles Pollard knew him from. It was Miles said he had hung out with Robert Saturday during uh, during the during his visit to Auburn. Yep. Uh, Robert had come to the Georgia game. He came back for Big Cat, right? He came in June. He came in July. Yep. He came in uh, October. He came in November, and he's coming back at the end of November. So we're talking about five visits since June, and this is for an Alabama kid, an Alabama commitment. Yeah. So. A lot of uh, – and he's going to remain quiet, and I don't blame him. You're not going to get him to get on the get on the phone and talk about how he loved his visit to Auburn and how he's rethinking his commitment to Alabama. He's just not going to happen. And I don't blame him. I think what we're going to see from Robert Woodyard's recruitment is you're going to see him come back to Auburn for the Iron Bowl. You're going to see him leave without giving any interviews. You're, it's going to be hard – you're going to be hard-pressed to get anything from him until December the 15th, which is signing day. Yep. And then you're going to see his final choice. And I think Cole and I both expect right now, at least, that that choice will be to flip to Auburn. Yeah, I think unless something crazy happens, which you never, ever rule out in recruiting, I'm I'm right more and more every day. Uh, (laughs) I think Auburn's in great shape. And those, and again, those visits you just rattled off, I mean – they were kept under wraps until – I mean, we didn't find out about those until after it was over. Right. Which is kind of unusual. I mean, that's how he's gone about this. And and uh, I think he's been over to Alabama a few times too. So, it's not completely over. But I think I think Auburn's done enough to, to make this one happen. And, and yep. they're, really, they're really selling – I mean, they are selling hard. And I, and I know this because I talked to Raylan Wilson, who was a four-star 2023 guy that made his first trip to Auburn. They're selling hard that McLean, Papo, Wooten, those guys are fixing to be gone. And they have been the starters at Auburn at, for, at linebacker for two, two to three years now. Uh-huh. So there is an opportunity. You're, you're going to play early whether you want to or not. Some guys, that's a big deal. Some, it's not a huge deal. But um, obviously, that's paying off for Woodyard and, and guys like Raylan Wilson because Jeff Smetting told him directly, hey, Watch Jacoby McLean. That's the position you'll play. That's it. You better watch him every snap because that's what we want you to do. And we want you to do it early, like right when you get here. It's time, you know. So that's uh, – to me, that stood out a lot. That was Raylan. That was Raylan that told us that. And, and, you know, going back to Woodyard, that's the thing I think – I think there are two things working in Auburn's favor with him and, and their attempts to flip him from Alabama. And number one is Auburn – in my opinion, from what I've been told from people around Robert, is that Auburn has made him a higher priority than Alabama has, even though he's committed to Alabama. Number two is that uh, you, you see these kids, and they, they just keep flocking to Alabama and Georgia and Clemson and Ohio State, even though there's you know, a roster and a depth chart full of four- and five-star guys, and you, you go there with the understanding that you may not play for three years. And then you may only play a year or two, before it's time to either go. And, and some kids are okay with this, obviously, or they wouldn't continue to bring those in. Robert, I think he, he's ready to play. Now, he just had a little injury, if I'm not mistaken, uh, MCL or something. You remember yeah, that, Cole? Something. 
It was yeah. it was it wasn't like a torn ACL or anything. It was it was a knee injury, but it was yeah. you know it, as knee injuries goes, it was kind of minor, I guess you could say. Yeah, exactly. But Cuz wants to play. Yeah, he doesn't want to sit on the bench for three years at Alabama and then play for two. He wants to come in and he wants to play, and he sees that at Auburn. And and like you mentioned, that depth the depth charts in favor of all of uh, linebackers coming in and. We'll see how it turns out. Auburn's in on some other big big linebackers. We expect them to the iron bow. My God. Yeah, and, and I'll say too, Jeffrey, you don't forget Robert Woodard is cousins with uh Lee Hunter that's on the team right now. Ah, yeah, I forgot about that. That's what was working in Auburn's favor way before he committed to Alabama too. And and he would he'd been on campus two or three times then. So this is not this is not just a quick turnaround. I mean, this is something that has been in the works for a while. And, and now it's starting to, you know, it's crunch time. And uh, he'll end up where he really wants to be. And, and it just seems like Auburn's that that destination right now. But, you know, we'll, we'll keep watching it and see what happens. Because if Alabama wants somebody and, and they yeah. decide in that they're going to keep them, they're going to do everything they can. And they're usually really successful with that. Absolutely, man. It's tough, <laughs> dude. It's tough. I've always said it. it's tough for anybody to get an in-state kid away from Alabama if Alabama really wants. Uh, that's just that, that's the reality. That's the reality of it, right? I mean, mm-hmm. no, no need to sugarcoat it. Which is why I haven't blamed – I didn't blame Gus. I'm certainly not going to blame Brian Harson for spending their wheels on kids that Alabama really wants because you're going to miss nine times out of ten. Well, we you know, we've seen, too, that if, if Alabama decides to drop you, they don't waste a lot of time. They're going to drop right. you take you off the commit list and they haven't done that with Woodyard. He he's had a good senior year before he got hurt. He's he's very athletic. I mean he's got a great high ceiling as a player. So this is where this is where you watch and see how does Harson close with these guys? How is he gonna how's he gonna finish is he gonna be is he gonna be a threat at all to Alabama? Right. If he can if he can make that one happen, then that's a great start. Sticking with the linebackers, I find the linebacker recruiting in this class to be extremely interesting, especially as we get closer and closer to National Signing Day. You, we talked about Robert Woodyard. Auburn has a commitment commitment from Auburn High, Powell Gordon. Although we're, you know, I, I talked about it, I think, last week in the hot board that Powell is a guy that we saw against IMG who is absolutely capable of playing edge. Yes. Absolutely playing. So, and Auburn's re- edge recruiting right now, Shit, I don't know. Well, can, could you name one name that Auburn has a 50% shot or better of getting? Uh, no. It's a no. pretty exclusive club of who they're recruiting. You know, we've got uh, Trevion Williams, of course, uh, Shamar James, and just not guys that I would, you know, place a wager on that's going to end up at Auburn, maybe not even visit again. Honestly, it just seems like, um, you know, these are our guys – at the beginning of the year, this is who we like. Anybody else, in our opinion, is a drop off, and we have right. to have these guys to win. So if we don't get them, we'll go to the portal. That's how that's going to work. It seems like. So now with Powell Gordon, have you known what he's done this this season? Now he gives you at least another option. At least you're not going to you're not going to get shut out at the edge come December fifteenth if you sign Powell Gordon because he's always going to be an option there. Uh, Talking about middle linebacker, though, or linebacker spots, we talked about Robert Woodyard. We've got Demario Tolan, LSU commitment coming in for an official visit. Deuce Spurlock, the Michigan commitment from North Alabama. Thought he might come in from Mississippi State. If I'm not mistaken, there was uh... – anyway, he's expected to be back for the Iron Bowl. Uh, two good names there. Who am I missing, Cole? Um, those are kind of the top three guys, wouldn't you say? Yeah, those are your top guys for sure. Shamar James is still in the mix, you know, depending on what happens there. Again, Shamar James real close with Lee Hunter and Robert Woodyard, so it's just something to track on that. So I, I was actually keeping an eye open on him, an eye out on him this weekend to see if he might have caught a ride up here with Robert and Antonio. Yeah. But to my knowledge, he did not. Now, even – I still think even if he did, that's going to be a tough pull. He's committed to Florida. You know, I think a visit to Georgia really changed that. And would be surprised if he didn't end up at either Georgia or Alabama at this point. But who knows? Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, some other couple, a uh, couple other 2023 big dogs, AJ Harris. Mm-hmm. Um, I think is a five star on 24 seven, a top 30 player, regardless of the on three consensus rankings was yeah. back in Auburn. He had visited, I think back in the spring and I thought Auburn had a shot. You know, Zach Etheridge pinpointed this guy early and said, he's my dog. And, uh, made him a high priority now, which is why I was kind of surprised. I think in September when AJ Harris, who was not, he's not at central. He's in Phoenix city. Yeah. He's at Glenwood. Okay. Glenwood. There you go. So he's right down the road. So in September, he comes out with the top seven in freaking crickets, man. on <laughs> yeah. You know what? Yep. And I was like, damn, I mean, that's a slap in the face. I think that was right after, the other in-state DB, Tony Mitchell, didn't have Auburn in his top 12, I think. Yeah. So, you know, people people lost their minds on that. I understand it. I, I get that. But he, he was back, right? Came back. Yeah, and I thought it was so interesting, and it made so much sense to me why Auburn was left out of probably his and Tony Mitchell's both. We know yep. Tony Mitchell also came. We'll get to him in a minute. Uh, but A.J. Harris says – man, I didn't feel like their scheme fit me. And what were we seeing early in the season for Auburn's defensive backs? What were we seeing? Everybody was complaining about it. We we were seeing some coverage. Yeah. Cornerbacks who who have made a name for themselves playing man and press man, and we didn't see it. Well, look, elite, elite cornerbacks, and and when you're talking about A.J. Harris and Tony Mitchell, those guys are elite as far as their ranking goes. Right. them both play and they are very good they're very good in man coverage so why would you want to go somewhere and play in something that's totally different which has been the gripe for a lot of fans and a lot of people who watch the game real closely you got roger mccreary mccreary jalen simpson nehemiah appreciate guys who have you know done well in man coverage and you're running almost a 100 percent zone scheme to start things off and auburn was struggling so they were like well i don't want that to be me you know, I, I play man coverage. That's what I do. That's what I've always done. I'm going to go somewhere that's going to utilize that. Not going to play zone in the NFL. Right. Not not a lot, at least. Not Especially on the corners. Yeah, so, right. So, A.J. Harris leaves and says, hey, man, Auburn's definitely going to be a top school for me from now on. He's starting to see. You saw Roger McCreary. You saw Jalen Simpson, uh, Nehemiah Pritchett all locked in. I'm guessing. Cole, you, you pay attention to the coverages a lot more than I do. But we, I, I feel like we've seen more man since yeah. the first half of the season. Definitely. And, and if it's not just straight-up man, it's a zone man combo, which is what they were doing a lot against Mississippi State. wasn't working because Mike right. Leach had already figured that out, you know. But um, it's, it's not necessarily a knock on how Auburn's DBs were playing. It's more of a knock on, you know, bringing three guys on the pass rush. It's kind of difficult to cover that long. If you're not getting any pressure against five wide, four wide looks all the time, but besides the point, it's it's that to see that Roger McCreary, Jalen Simpson, Nehemiah Pritchett were getting tested in man coverage, and they had some good plays early in the game. Later in the game, they gave up some big plays. Again, that's your weird little thing in recruiting where they're like, okay, well they're getting to play man coverage. Glad to see that. That's your scheme. Second half, well, they're not making plays. That's where I come and make plays, right? And that's kind of what A.J. Harris told us. I mean, he, he said, you know, I, I like I saw some things that I wanted to see from Auburn today as far as the scheme, and and I think I, I fit a lot better than I than I originally thought that I did. You know, so. That did was- you hear about the same from Tony Mitchell? Tony Mitchell, for everybody listening, I think he's more of a safety, five-star safety from Thompson. Yeah, he now he told us that they liked him at corner. Really? Uh, we asked him, you know, I asked him that, and he said they're talking to me about corner. Um, it, it's, but it's still up in the air, kind of. I mean, he he could play pretty much any position. You in just sport. get that dude on the team and figure out. Yeah, he's got, he's, he's, got you. he's got the athleticism, the physicality, length, all that. So it's not an issue. They just want to get in there, right? <laughs> however, yeah. however, he needs to get in there. Yeah, he was kind of he was a little bit more quiet than AJ. I thought AJ kind of told us some things that that was more eye opening. But 
I'd say that 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 Tony Mitchell is definitely considering Auburn again if he wasn't if he wasn't in the first place. They got his attention, and uh, you know that's a good thing because yeah. there's a long way to go in those recruitments. For for guys like that, you want them to leave that visit Saturday, going at the very least, I'll come back. Exactly. At the very least, in state five star defensive backs, anybody, any position, you want to leave the the, the last visit with at least them wanting to come back. Uh, who else are we leaving out? I know you talked to the edge. Uh, da, 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 da. Pierre? Yes, Yonze Pierre. I did. He's um, – I think that was his second trip to Auburn that I know of. Uh, first game, I believe. I could be wrong on that, but it's the first time I've seen him at a game right, this year. Right, yeah. Uh, He's kind of a quiet guy too. He when we asked him, you know, about the schools that were in the mix, he's like, ah, you know, I hadn't gotten that far yet. Still kind of taking it slow. But Auburn's definitely in there. Where's he from? He is from Ufala. Jarrell Jernigan, if you'll remember Jarrell Jernigan. Oh yeah. Yeah. And Courtney Upshaw. Courtney Upshaw. Yep. Some good players that come out of there. I'll tell you who I uh forgot to mention. Speaking of 2023 defensive lineman, was Tamari and Parker. He was there. He Again. Is, man, he is – every time I see that guy, I'm like – I forget who he is sometimes, and I'm like, man, who is that guy? He just stands out. I mean, he is an impressive-looking guy, you know. And and we talked to him too. Yeah. And he had good things to say. I mean, like I said, everybody had good things to say. I don't want to keep sounding – the. I don't want to sound like a broken record on that. But the big takeaway here is that – they're back. They're hanging out with Auburn commits. They're getting comfortable. They're talking to the coaches. They're understanding the scheme. And that's one of the, to me, I'm a scheme guy. You know, I'm a, I'm a former coach. That's what I think about. That's what I think about the most. And when I talk to these recruits, that's kind of the way that I relate to them because I want to know what, what's being told to them. It's kind of a way to see, you know, how are they recruiting you one to, you know, what, what's their plan? If, if they get you, what's the plan going to be? Uh, you know, so he tells us outside linebacker edge, you know, defensive line, kind of a hybrid guy, maybe like Derek Hall. Um, and, and and he likes that fit. So he's going to keep coming back. He said he'll be back for the Iron Bowl more than likely. Uh, I, I think Auburn's put, Auburn's put a lot on him, too. I, I think they're really – like they have him – in the very top, like in the top 10 of, of all prospects for 23. Overall guy. Yeah. Yeah. So they're, they're going to keep putting the heat on him, and he'll probably show up a few more times. And I, I don't know what will happen exactly. Like I said, there's still a long way to go. But, man, it's, it, that would be such a big in-state pull if they got Huge. And, and, you know, you always hear follow the visits. Well, if you follow the visits with Tamari and Parker, you got to like Auburn's chances. I, I went back and counted. I think that was his fifth game, fourth or fifth game this season. It, it, he's – I don't know that he's missed more than one or two home games. He's been he's been at, at Auburn, really likes Auburn. He's a scenic, uh, Phoenix City Central yes. kid. Auburn traditionally doesn't have much luck there, but maybe Brian Harson can change that. Uh, of course, we know that they also have Camar- Camar- Carmelo English, four-star yep. wide receiver. Who hasn't been as frequent a visitor as Tamari and Parker, but certainly I'm guessing he is a high priority for Auburn in the 2023 class as well. Absolutely. Cole, one thing I thought was newsworthy, not related to Auburn's game or visiting, was Antavius Woody. Yeah. Four star defensive lineman from Lafette, Lafette, not Lafayette, but Lafette, Lafette. Alabama. Lafette. Alabama. He is committed to Florida State, has been for a while now, but Auburn has tr- been trying to change that. And up until a week or two ago, sounded like they had a really, really good shot. And I'm not saying they don't now, but he's actually come on record now with Chad Simmons this past week. Past weekend, I think he told him, I th- think Chad Simmons talked to him Sunday when he went to Florida State for the game. And Florida State's actually – uh, they stopped shitting the bed so much this year. I mean, you know, they're at least doing a little bit better than they were. Yeah, right? they're, they're turning things around a little bit. Yeah. As quotes to Chad Simmons were, my first step out of the car Saturday, I said, yes, I'm finally home. 
<laughs> I felt the love. Then he went on to say uh, two paragraphs later, I'm a hundred percent, I am 100% committed to Florida state. But I'm going to take an official visit to Auburn for the iron bowl. Yeah. There's the key. There's the kicker. And I, I wrote, I wrote on the corner, posted on the corner, our message board on Auburn live at Auburn live on three. I was like, you know, all the Auburn fans were going, oh, he's 100 percent committed to Florida State. It's over. God, I said. And I'm going, dude, imagine if Auburn had a kid from Tallahassee committed right now. He came up for a visit to Auburn. He said, I'm 100 percent committed to Auburn. But I don't, I'm going to go take a visit, uh, an, an official visit to Florida State when they play Florida in two weeks. Auburn fans would be like, oh, we're going to lose him. Oh, he's not 100 percent committed. <laughs> now, now, this is just some of the guys on the board. <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, every, so there's a lot of folks that's got some. You, some uh, you know, you know the ones. Yeah. Right. 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 <laughs> the, 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 the most, the most vocal ones are the ones that freak out the most. Yes. Uh, yeah. So, but I, I, to me, and I, and I wrote that on the, on the message board, I thought the thing that stands that out to me, none of that mattered. None of that story, none of those quotes mattered until the very last one where he said, but I'm going to visit Auburn. That's all I needed to see. Yep. He's going to visit Auburn. Hey, if I'm committed to a school, I'm going to, I, I'm not going to let them think that, oh, I'm, it's 50 50. I'm going to take a visit to Auburn and then I'm going to reevaluate my decision. No, that, that wouldn't be very smart. The, the other school would say, deuces, Poppy. And you better hope Auburn takes you. <laughs> yeah, right. So, yeah, and if you think that's never happened before, if you think a recruit has gone, okay, I'm 100% here and then, and, you know, flipped. If you think that's never happened before. Oh, uh, yeah. How about Romello Height? Do you remember that one? Oh, yeah. Just just to keep it in-house here. Uh, was he committed I, to Miami? He was committed to Miami and visited Miami right before signing day and said, all right, I'm in 100%. Put out a tweet, had a graphic. You know, it's done, locked up. Signing day comes around, flip to the Tigers. Ooh. So – I mean, it can happen, guys. It's not – nothing's off the table. Nothing is off the table. And, and Auburn – and I was told not too long ago, I mean, you know, less than two weeks ago that, you know, we put up the top tens, right? Top tens for yeah. offense, top tens for defense. And they were like, hey, uh, you know, Woody and Curtis Perry kind of on the same level here. I don't know if, if he's much higher. I mean, I had Curtis Perry at number one, Woody at number five or six, something like that. They're like, hey, they're kind of on the same level as far as defensive line goes. I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't have him so much higher. I was like, okay. Good We're talking play. about top ten overall targets on the defense. Correct. Yeah. And they were like, uh, and I said, okay, good to know. So you're so, saying Curtis Perry is not in tier one, and Tay Woody is in tier two? No, I'm saying they're they're probably both in tier one. Right. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And I, I, that's, that was the impression I got, and that's the impression I continue to get because they are still recruiting him pretty hard. Uh, probably even probably one of the top guys they're recruiting still, and nothing's changed on that front. So, and both yeah. will be in for official visits for the Iron Bowl. Correct. Woo wee! Going to be a big. Hey, did you see Jackson Long decommitted from Tulane? I did not. He commit. He decommitted. Jackson Long is a tight end from Tennessee. Uh, yeah, I believe Tennessee. Uh, yeah, Tennessee. He's committed to Tulane. He visited Auburn maybe for the twice. Georgia game. He twice. Twice. Got to yeah. keep an eye on it. I thought of you when I uh, when I saw he decommitted. Well, we all know Auburn has a commitment from Micah Riley Ducker. Yep. Still recruiting that Jackson Long kid, but we both think that Colston Loveland, who is a kid from Texas. who is no, he's from Gooding, Idaho. Idaho. Yeah, he's from Idaho. That's right. Gooding, yeah. Idaho. So you know Harson and those guys, Bedell have known about this kid for a long time. They love him. Uh, yeah. He's committed. He's committed Back, to Michigan. By the way, was one of the reasons he kind of faded away for a while. You may have heard his name when he got offered, and then nothing. Right. Was because he was like, okay, uh, I'm an Idaho guy. You know, why did it take so long to get your offer out here? And that was something I heard. I don't know if that's you know, I'm not. I haven't reported that just because I. I, I I just it was a hearsay kind of thing, but it would make sense, right? And now they're they're making a run at him. Shit, he lives in Idaho, man. They got to get the Pony Express out there. It takes a few weeks. To <laughs> I'm saying, why was he not one of the first offers? I mean, I think he was offered in May, 
something like that. Michael Riley Ducker was offered in January, just to put it in perspective. So that was uh, weeks after Harson took the job. You know, yeah, I'm, I'm just saying, just putting that out there. I, I will call the post office. Call. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll check into that. I'll file a formal complaint. Karen, Karen Lee. <laughs> So he is committed to Michigan, but we have heard that he could be back in Auburn for an official visit for the Iron Bowl. Haven't confirmed that from him yet, but yes. have heard some buzz on that. It's going to be a big Iron Bowl. It's going to be a big recruiting weekend. Huge. 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 So uh, we'll be looking forward to that professionally. Personally, I won't be, but professionally, I will be. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see, Cole. Uh, got about Deuce a month. Spurlock, Deuce Spurlock, too, is another Michigan guy that could probably be there for the Iron Bowl. A lot of kids committed, man. Yeah. I mean, like, like I said, they, they have guys they pick out, and then they go, that's that's my guy. I'm going to see if I can get him. And, and, and good for them. We all know commitments don't mean shit. Yeah, that's right. Nothing. Nothing. It means nothing. Uh, Auburn has so far done since – I guess the summer locking these commitments down, you know, they lost Andre Stewart back in the day. They lost Jarrell Stinson. Yep. Uh, I think there was another one. Does Brian Dilworth count? Oh my God. <laughs> I guess so. I, 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 I want to see where he ends up. Now, hey, Brian, if you're listening to your baller, no, 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 no. Hate. Oh yeah. No doubt. No doubt. <laughs> but that was, uh, so anyway, besides those three, you know, they've, they've kept these guys committed, even though Martin Kelly, the guy who kind of was waffling after uh, Cornelius Williams was fired, seems yeah. to be locked in. Jay Fair locked in. Damari Austin, Holden Garner, Bobo, Harris, a lot of good guys locked in right now. And not only locked in, but recruiting for Auburn. Yep. And trying to make this class top 20, top 15 maybe. Depends on the numbers, depends on who they get, how many they will take. And we will yep. continue to discuss that and try to figure it out before December 15th gets here because that's the day pen meets paper. That's right. Let me say, let me throw this in there too, Jeffrey. If, if you're looking for somebody who might be the first addition to the 2023 class. Yes, sir. 2023 offensive line, defensive line target from Auburn High School. Mr. Braden Jordan Braden. put out his top two, uh, Auburn, Georgia. And – I like the Tigers on that one. I'll just say that. Another dude who's been to almost every home game. Yeah. If think, not if not every home game. I think he's been every one but but one. And I don't remember which one it was, but it was the one that Essen Harris and, and, and Drew Bubba weren't at for whatever reason. Maybe the week that Drew went to Georgia. I believe you might be right. Then again, he could have been there. Braden could have been there that week too. I don't I'm not I'm not sure, but you seen has, him. You seen him, Cole. You saw him against IMG, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, he played. He played pretty well on the defensive line. I mean, you like him better on defense or offense? I like him better on defense. Okay, personally, is he like a Teddy Woody kind of guy? Um, no. If he's a defensive guy, he's a nose. All okay, way. Tony Fair. He's, yeah, more like him, but he's not. He's not. He's a little bit more, maybe a little more uh, mobile than him. He moves okay. I, I think the knock of it against him is just his 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 height, and he's about six foot six one. Well, he weighs on. three twenty. You know, so that size is something that that some people have said. Okay, that's kind of that's something I'm looking at. Damn. But he, but he keeps showing out that 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 he can play pretty well and on the highest level of Alabama football, which is saying something. Absolutely. And uh, I thought he played pretty well on the defensive line against IMG. Of course, he didn't play many offensive snaps. I don't think he played any. I think he played all defense. But he they didn't move him. They didn't move him up front, and that's that's your job as a nose guard, right? He's a plugger. That's right, yeah. We're talking maybe, to TJ, maybe TJ a, Jackson. I'm thinking maybe Don Tavis Russell. Tyler. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't ever think about him when I think of short, stubby guys. Uh, he's kind of he kind of flew under the radar, but he was a pretty solid player for Auburn. Came from Oxford High with Keith Etheridge, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, yes, Braden did. Yes, hey, and listen, I don't have a problem with Auburn. I, I don't even know if this would be taking a risk or taking a chance if the guy's got Auburn and Georgia in his, his final two or whatever it is. Uh, you know, he, he's a guy you take a chance on, especially in the, in the trenches. 
But I certainly don't mind Auburn taking chances or taking risk on a guy from Auburn High School. Auburn has oh, not, okay. you know. I mean, okay. you, you, if you're going to take chances, take chances on these local kids, especially factories like Auburn High School, Central Phoenix City. Uh, and I wouldn't consider him a big chance. I mean, he is a four-star guy. Uh, I'm not sure what we have. I think we have him unrated at the moment, but working yeah. on rating him. Right. But he's seen as a four-star guy pretty much, you know, in all the rankings. I mean, he's done pretty well everywhere he's been. He was a standout at Oxford, comes to Auburn, and he's still playing pretty well. So, you know, I, I think he's a good player. I think once he gets shaped up in the weight room and all that, he's going to he's gonna have a much better chance at playing at Auburn. Um Here's here's my thought on it though, you know you see Demari Austin in this class and he's just like a leader. Him and Holden Gurner, Powell Gordon, those guys that have kind of been just recruiting like crazy on Twitter, and you see what they put on Twitter, but they do that in person too. I've watched them do it. They're talking with guys. They're constantly you know politicking for lack of better terms, trying to get guys to to come to Auburn. I mean they are very serious about that. Well, I. <laughs> Oh, shit, the, D- the DEA, Cole. Sorry about that. Sorry. Flush, flush. Anyway, um, yeah, I think he could be the guy that um, kind of becomes oh. the recruiter in the class. Okay. all right. Saying. Your campaign like, manager. Yeah, yeah, because he's just – he's Mr. – you know, he's Mr. Auburn football. He's always there. He's He's always, you know, smiling, talking to guys. He's a great personality. Guys know him been to camps and things like that, I think it'll probably work out that way if he goes to Auburn. Got to have a guy like that, especially early. Yep. A, a rah-rah cheerleader, a campaign manager, absolutely. Damari Austin has been doing that for Auburn. I think he's probably been the more, at the forefront for this 2022 class and certainly has made a difference. Loves uh, loves Auburn, loves his class, wants people to join him, knows what Auburn needs and knows who, who they want. He goes after them. Cole, we have been talking for almost 50 minutes, and if we continue talking, I'm going to have to rename the show Swinging at the Knees instead of the Shriveled Pond. <laughs> so let me get the uh, – I got 10 how about you, man. We've, we've had some – oh, I'm sorry, eight. Eight. I, okay. I marked two of them off, man. We've had some really good posters on the corner of our message board. I want to give a couple of how about you to uh, Rick P. Hey. Rick, Rick P. Yeah. Yeah, you know Rick P. I know Rick. Not Rick Q, Rick P. That's right. Crocosile, my dude, Crocosile 22, man. This dude's the loyal as they come. I love Crocosile. Big, great poster. Big, big time. And then, our, uh, let's see, Fourth Vision, I think, is a uh, – he had a really good post. I can't remember what it was about, but it was it was good enough for me to go, that guy right there deserves a how about you. Fourth <laughs> Vision. And then we've got Will H. Will H, is, he loves recruiting, dude. He's all over you. He's all over me. Yeah, man, he, he is all over our stuff. I, I really like him. Stats don't matter it, it, it is as well. Those two guys love yeah. recruiting. All over uh, it. Very, uh, very, very good poster. Posts a lot. Asks some good questions. Makes some good points. Both of those guys. Will H, stats don't matter. And then I've got one, two. I'll even give – I, I want to give a, a shout-out to Cook. Cook E-W. Okay. E-D-W. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Cook's a long time poster, man. Trustworthy guy, or loyal at least. I don't know if I can, sh- I, I can trust him, but he's, <laughs> he's always around, man. He, he makes some good stuff. I, I like how he bumps old posts, keeps people honest. That's what I guess, guess what a uh, big thing with him. And then I've got uh, two legends who I appreciate them posting on the board. They've got unbelievable stuff, great insight, great intel, insider level stuff. We got Dong Dong. I mean, we <laughs> got Dong Dong. Looking forward to Friday mornings. Absolutely. Trampoline, Friday mornings on the trampoline with Dong Dong. If you guys are not um, subscribers to Auburn Live, you need to do it if for nothing else. Yeah, man. Fantastic. To, to have the Dong Dong in your face. He owes and then, me some uh, too, by the way. What's that? He owes me some money on Venmo. I, I, I messaged him my Venmo. I still haven't gotten it yet. I don't know what's Is going on. Is that right? Yeah. If you need a little help with that, you let me know. Give me like two dollars now. So shit. He needs to get on that. I want my two dollars. What was that off a Christmas story? Yeah. (laughs) And then uh who was it? It's like the jelly of the month club. There you go. The gift that keeps on giving. (laughs) Last but certainly not least for my how about you, man. Big how about you, the J Head. He's got some numerals after his name, but everybody knows him as J Head. 
I know him as badass, legendary, epic insider. No doubt. All man. he has is Jay as his profile picture. That's all he needs, man. Yeah. You know who it is, man. You know who it is. All right, Cole, let's wrap it up there. We will probably, I mean, every time we've got something to talk about, man, let's just hop on here. I, I really want this thing to be a short, concise version of, of a long, I don't want to do this one time a week for an hour. I'd rather do it two or three times a week for 25, 30 minutes, get more information out. Yeah. And uh, But we had a big weekend. We're going to have a lot of stuff going on. We're going to finish it out this week. Going to update hot boards. We got war rooms coming. Uh, I'm sure, Cole, gosh, Cole, man, you got insiders. You got top targets, man. Love reading your stuff. And I know the uh, subscribers do too. Uh, lastly, my going out, I want everybody to continue to remember, remember, slower traffic, keep right. Because if I pass you on the right, you're an idiot. So long.